Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Settlement Survival in our town of Relyton. This video is still sponsored by the developers in celebration of the full release of the game. A big thank you to them for that. And of course, if you guys would like to learn more, you can find a link in the description down below. Now, in the last video, we received a pretty massive influx of population, 20 refugees, which is awesome in the sense that it lets me jumpstart my economy and start occupying a lot more jobs than we would be able to otherwise. For example, we now have a mine at full capacity, which means we're going to solve a lot of our domestic fuel issues. But it does come with certain growing pains. You know, kind of like when you become a teenager and you go through a growth spurt and your bones ache and your chest hurts and your voice changes. Same concept. But, you know, on kind of the threat of death for everyone in your town. We need to find a way to start producing a lot more food to meet all these extra mouths, right? But we also have other problems. For example, we're running out of clothing. Now, I'm trying to start growing some emergency flax, and if I can get a tech point, we will go to weaving and unlock the textile mill to get cloth and turn that into a new form of clothes, right? Other than that, we need to start getting additional wool, we need to get some extra leather, there's a lot of things we need to do. This can kill you just as readily as running out of food, and by the way, we are now completely out of food. But there are other advantages to having to grow aggressively toward higher technology and other such options, right? We need to unlock better forms of clothing, and getting the weaving technology will do that. We can unlock the down jackets, which takes two different types of materials, but you get such better quality clothes, it lasts longer and it keeps people warmer. So this is kind of one of those things where like necessity is the mother of in innovation, and that innovation is going to just make you so much more efficient in the long run. So don't be afraid of the growing pains. Learn from them, adapt to them, and you're going to find that you are rewarded with a generally better economy. So case in point right now, we're kind of in a dangerous spot, right? I'm only just now starting to harvest some food. We've been sitting close to zero, treading water, letting some people go hungry, but we've been able to avoid starvation, and that's the real critical thing. Now that we're getting into harvest season, we're hoping we're going to see this number go up by a lot. I'm also watching this flax. There's a tech point, by the way, so let's go ahead and pick up that weaving technology. Now, I'd love to get a water mill, but I don't think I quite have the time to walk down here and do all this, or do I? Let me think for a quick second. It would be nice to take advantage of the river because it does make people work a lot uh, more efficiently. So one person can do the job of, I don't know the exact numbers, it's like 1.3 people or something around there. Let's just say it's 30% more efficient. For no extra labor input, it's just a matter of real estate, right? So I guess what I can do is try setting up some little farms around here and then plan around this being a farming area and then start setting up along the river. It's a bit more travel time, but if it means that less labor goes further, maybe that's worth it. So let's see, textile water mill, blah, 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 right around here should be about perfect, actually. All right. That fits pretty nicely for me. So yeah, let's go ahead and set up a quick road down over here. Um, it is not important to me right now that I build out these farms, but come winter, as long as, you know, people don't freeze to death and I can get some clothing together, that might be worth setting up so that we can demolish some of these farms and move to more effective fertile soil. One could argue I should have done this a lot sooner, but it seems to be okay. Let's go ahead and prioritize this water mill. Unfortunately, we are out of things like some iron. Well, um, that's a problem. We have some rocks over here, so if we can get over here quickly enough, maybe we'll be okay. But with autumn fast approaching and the temperature dropping, we're on the clock here. A new seed was acquired. Oh, that's exciting. What do we discover? The coffee? Is that what we just discovered? Did I already have that? I don't know. Coffee. Well, that's fun. That's something we could actually plant down in our orchard. If we want to start making a luxury uh, drink to boost up some happiness, it's not even necessarily a bad idea. That said, that doesn't strike me as a very high priority. Oh, look, some people are freezing when it's only two degrees outside, which admittedly is very, very cold, but usually they don't have this problem. Why is it a problem? Because we are completely out of clothes. Nine people currently haven't got any clothes. They are wandering around naked. Very sad for them, but it's okay. It's okay. The mill is almost done. And how much flax did we get? It looks like we planted and harvested about almost 1,200. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, I don't know how much cloth that turns into. We probably should be extra cautious not to send people too far out into the cold right now because they won't die from exposure, but their warmth is going to drop so fast that they could still freeze to death. I guess I guess they would die from exposure. What I'm saying is they're more likely to die from exposure, but it's not an instantaneous thing. Just keep them close to home. So let's assign two people to the textile water mill. We are going to be making some linen. It looks like 20 becomes 4. Okay, and then how many clothes do we get out of that? Five becomes five. Okay, 
So really, as far as how many clothes we can produce, you take the, what was it, 11,080-ish? Somewhere around there, divide that by 20, that's 59 sets of clothes. Um, not enough to deal with my entire population, but considering only 21 people are missing it, if we can make this quickly enough, then that would be enough to get me through the winter. Yeah, it's not going to resolve itself until next year, but the point is, I think we've avoided a major crisis. We just have to continue getting some flax. And, oh, I did kind of forget to add more people to hunting jobs to get some extra leather. Should have done that sooner, but okay. While we're waiting for winter to end, something I should have done a while ago and I forgot about it is produce a latrine, right? A place where residences will be able to go putty. Um, I actually never had to worry about this before because the last time I played this game, this wasn't a thing, I think. So that's kind of one of the wonderful things about going through the early access. A lot of stuff changed for the game, but now we're in full release. So I need to start learning some of the new features that I missed since the last time I played. This should boost up health because waste disposal can make up for about 10% of a person's health, apparently. So by having some of these latrines set, I'm expecting the health to go up a little bit. Not enough that it's gonna get me out of the uh, potential for extra fractures and sprains, but hopefully enough to keep me above 50% and not have any major plague outbreaks. So what do we wanna work on next? That is a fantastic question. Um, we are, oh my gosh, we're completely out of food again. It's fine, um, I'm not worried about it yet. We can gather up plants, and in a pinch, this is a pretty good way of meeting a lot of your early game food needs. Uh, all we need to do is supplement our food long enough for all the other jobs to turn on, which is what they're doing right now. So even though this looks dire, and it's obviously not optimal, I'm not worried yet, we're okay. Here we go, here we go. See, the clothing situation is starting to resolve itself. We only have six people that need clothes. We actually got a huge influx of clothing from zero to like 80. And that's because all that was being produced by two tailors over here was just sitting in its inventory waiting for delivery. Once it delivered, everyone's picking up clothes, and now we're back in the positive. Excellent. I am going to build in another tailor, though. An advanced tailor. We might end up getting rid of this one over here. We may not. But an advanced tailor is going to allow me to start making those upgraded clothes I was talking about. Yes, we could upgrade this building. But at a time when I'm desperately trying to make more clothes, I don't want to have any downtime waiting for a few weeks or months to build this sucker back up. I'd rather go ahead and start building out a second one, knowing that at some point we'll need to have two tailors as our population grows anyway, just so I don't have any downtime. And now we do have another tech point. What do I want? Uh, that's a great question. What do I want here? You know, it would make some sense to get cut stone. Cut stone is a material we're going to need for a lot of it more advanced construction, but it's also going to be helpful in letting me start upgrading some roads. Now, we could upgrade some roads now, right? All I gotta do is just use up a whole load of my stone, I could build up some upgrades, people will start moving faster. But if I wait, I can cut that stone into bricks and we can make even more effective roads instead. So it's a question of, do I wanna spend some stone to get an efficiency right now when I'm going to just replace it all later again? Or do I want to wait and be a little bit more effective with my stone? Considering how low we are, I think that's what I'm going to do. That's about to solve itself a little bit, though. Let's take a look at this. We got 12 more immigrants who want to move in. Beautiful. Guess what you're going to do? That's right. You're going to build out the quarry and work over here and get me a renewable source of stone. And here's a wonderful thing. 12 more immigrants? Guess what? Our interim housing takes care of them. So we still need to place down some houses if we want to continue growing our population. But at the very least, right now... Nobody's homeless, nobody's freezing, and that is a very, very good thing. It does mean we have, you know, even more mouths to feed, which is upsetting. Let's go ahead and build out another gatherer's hut over here. We might want to get even another hunter's cabin, maybe. Or we need to find some more animals, like some geese over here, for example. Hi, geese! I need someone to come over here and grab that. And we can set up another pasture, and that would be another good way of getting some extra food. All right, with the advanced tailor, let's take a look at some down jackets. Yeah, so that takes a lot more material, like a lot more. However, I want to note that the rough clothes have a durability of 400, and they only improve their temperature by 1 and happiness by 20. A down jacket has a durability of 450, so they last longer, but they're also more effective at dealing with the temperature and the happiness goes up. So if we can get ourselves in a situation where I'm producing, let's say, feathers by getting the geese over here... Uh, this would be a very good opportunity to start swapping over to a higher quality form of material. In the meantime, I'm planning out a lot more expansion, because in this video, I'd like to really start ramping things up and moving faster. As long as we can get ourselves into a stable situation, I think now's the time 
to start taking my excess uh, population and really start to explode everywhere. For that, there's a lot of different industries that I'm going to need. We're going to want to get some reed fields up and running so I can start growing reeds and turning that into paper. And at paper, I will start making a lot more science. I also need a water reservoir because as our population grows, we're going to have some issues getting water fast enough out of some simple wells and they're just not going to cut it. I also am building out two sand pits. This will let me get sand and clay. Two resources I'm going to need to make bricks and glass, which is something we'll be able to unlock once we get the calcining kiln. The calcining kiln, however, is going to require some refined fuel, so we can turn timber or coal into a special fuel that is used over here. So it's going to be at least a couple of tech points before we can really take advantage of this, but we might as well get the infrastructure set up. The quarry is up and running. That's going to make my life a little bit easier. Okay, let's assign only five people here for the moment. I think that's going to be A-OK. -okay. And we actually had enough food that's lasted us through the winter. It's going to be a little bit of a rough spring and summer, but overall... We're looking kind of okay here. Yeah, actually. Uh, aside from the fact that we're producing iron instead of coal over here, we can swap back over later. We're green across the board in the stuff that I care about. It, it looks like we're not making enough lumber and water, but looking at these numbers, no, it's actually been doing fine. We're actually in really good shape now. Just had a really touch and go moment. That's it. Now, one problem with some of the farms in the industry we're placing down over here is the travel time. At the moment, we don't have anyone who lives nearby. That doesn't sound like it should be a big deal, it's just a short walk, but even that little bit of extra downtime can cause some issues. In fact, I wouldn't be very surprised if we find out some of these fertile soil farms are about as productive or maybe just a little bit more productive than the farms that are getting constant attention because people don't have to walk very far. So what I've done is i placed down another small marketplace over here so that I can construct some additional housing. And this is going to get people to live right next to these different workplaces, so again, they have more uptime. So as a matter of contrast, let's see how some of these did. Oh yeah, not that great. So a couple of these farms, 360, 440, that's very little. Comparatively, we got 720 in these farms, which had a bit more uptime. As opposed to about 520, very consistently close to town, wherever the beans are being placed. So yeah, kind of gives you an idea. These two, either they got a late planting start, which really shouldn't have happened, but who knows, or they were further away, or who knows. Somehow these didn't end up being quite as good. I'm hoping by placing some more housing down here, we're going to see this end up being a bit more consistent. But the good news is, take a look at our food. We're up to almost 5,000. That's plenty of food. Everything's looking really good. Let's go ahead and turn on this reservoir, because this is going to solve all of our water issues for at least the next few years, if we can do that. And I can start taking at least a little bit of labor away from some of the wells in town and putting them to good use elsewhere. Oh, wait, I can't build a reservoir because I need sand first. And see, this is why I knew I needed things like a sand pit. So now we got to go build this. Yep, 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 yep. There's always something, always something more to be built. So let's go to the sand pit and let's select some sand. I'll let two people work here temporarily. It is going to be important to have a lot of this stuff. It's not unusual that I end up needing lots of pits to make either clay or sand, but two is more than enough just to get this reservoir up and running, and then I'll probably turn it down a little bit. There we go, green across the board. The game certainly thinks that I am now producing enough of everything in order to meet my needs. That's what you like to see, all right. Hey, let's go ahead and start upgrading some of those roads I was talking about. Notice that the cut stone roads are going to improve people's movement speed by a whopping 75%. Contrast that with the dirt road, which only improved it by 25%. So this is kind of significant. If you feel like you don't have enough stone to go around, that's fine. But the best thing to do is to always place it down at least one or two major arteries of your town. The highest traffic areas, right? Something eh, kind of like down over here, for example. It's going to take us a while to produce enough stone, but we're going to see a marked improvement in everyone's ability to access all sorts of different areas around the town. More immigrants have arrived. Huh. Weirdly enough, I don't actually need them, but I'll happily take them anyway. 13 immigrants, and we get to upgrade to the next level of administration. All right. Do you want Oliva for the extra gathering structures or Agatha for fruit yield? Well, since right now I'm not producing any fruit, this seems like the obvious choice. We'll get Alva. I'm going to go ahead and demolish some of these fields over here because we no longer have the fertile soil bonus. We've used that up. So there's no point in keeping those farms over here. Instead, we'll keep these, and I have placed down a compost plant. 
This is going to take the dried animal dung, of which I am already producing a fair bit with our turkeys. We're going to moisturize that with water from the nearby reservoir and turn that into fertilizer, which gives back the fertile soil bonus. So we're going to be able to still continue producing a lot of food. This area over here basically needs to become my new farming area. So at some point soon, I need to start migrating all these farms away from the main town of the infrastructure areas and set it up over here instead. Also, something exciting I'm doing is I've set up our first paper mill. Let's go ahead and apply at least a few people here. I don't want to use my logs on this. So let's see if we can get away with just using reeds for now, because I do also have my first reed field up and running. If we can produce enough of this quickly, we can start producing some paper. Once we get a good stockpile of paper, I'm going to go ahead and apply it at the Research Institute. I want to show you guys just how effective paper is at boosting up your science. This is going to blow your mind. Okay, you guys ready to have your mind blown? Here we go. So, the research institute we had up over here. I've left this alone for a full year in-game, right? One full year, no paper added. It produced about 4,350 science for one person. That sounds pretty decent, but then let's contrast that with the research institute over here that I have been using paper on close to the paper mill to kind of cut down on some of the travel time. 19,110. That's how much better this darn thing is. So again, 19,110 versus 4,350. That's pretty good. That one institute is worth four regular ones running all on its own. Now granted, yes, it took some extra labor to make that happen. So you might be able to argue at some point it's better to have four of these research institutes with no paper, so you have only four people working rather than have a full industry up and running. Sure, I can get that. However, this is pretty darn impactful and I'm overproducing paper. I could set up a second research institute, Go ahead and take this one, turn on paper. Now we'll start producing something closer to 40,000 science per year, and it's only taking me an extra mm, six or seven laborers to do that instead of eight. That's pretty good. So yeah, I highly recommend getting paper up and running if you can. It's really good for boosting up your science. Speaking of which, I have not been spending my science points while I waited. Let's go ahead and fix that. If we get the education efficiency, we can actually use paper to boost up schools a little bit as well. That's not nearly as impactful in my opinion, so I don't care too much. Let's get the refined fuel in the calcining kiln. We're going to need some of that for sure. Uh, we could work towards something like fishing nets, which would unlock... Now you need rope for that. Where do I get the roper? That's something I'm going to need. I think it's in our knitting. Yes, we are going to need this at some point. Take some excess reeds or flax and turn that into ropes. Useful for fishing nets, but I don't care about this too much. We are going to need ropes for a few different types of buildings at some point, though. So what does it take to get a bedding shop? We need timber, stone, and there's the rope I was talking about. Perfect. An advanced bedding shop needs lamp oil, steel, and bricks. Don't have any of those, but that's fine. The reason I want bedding is I'm pretty sure we need this in order to build up the bathhouse. Am I correct on that? Yes, you need some bedding sets. Okay, and we've been talking about building one of these for a while so that we can start boosting up everyone's health and get rid of all these fractures and sprains. So I think that's something I'm going to work toward next. Let's also get the bedding, plus let's get the bricks and everything else. Now, if you thought the paper was good, something else you could do is start making some books. Which does require some ink, that's something we would have to start getting, I think taking some coal and some water and turning that into some black ink. You put that onto some paper, you create books, and you get even more science. Plus, we research the uh, research academy over here, which would consume said books. Not gonna work toward this right away. It is very nice to have things like advanced research, though. It boosts up your proficiency leveling up experience by 25%. Not a huge priority right this second, though. How are we doing as far as, let's say, my quarries and mines and stuff? Whoop, there we go. Uh, let's see, 68% inventory over here, 32%. And I did build out another mine over here so we can consistently make some iron and coal at the same time. Um, we don't have too many years to go before I really need to upgrade this mine. That is something we'll need to do. So I need to get exploitation tech at some point, though again, that takes a bunch of rope. So it is a good thing I've started producing that. Otherwise, I think we've more or less covered a lot of the absolute basics. Like, I don't feel like we're in a bad spot here. We seem to be making just about everything. Could get a barbecue to make our food go a little bit further, we've talked about that, but right now I've got plenty of food. Baskets, you know, that's a really good thing to have with a lot of reeds. Instead of making ropes, you just make a whole load of baskets and it boosts up people carrying capacity. We like that. 
Huh. Um, I actually don't know what I want to do with this last point right now. I think I'm just going to hold on to it in case something comes up. Let's go ahead and start setting up some fuel factories and kilns and such. It probably should be located kind of close to where the coal is being produced. So we could do something out over here. It's not exactly the most attractive location, but you know, I mean, again, reduced travel time is always a good thing. Let's get some kiln factories set up over here as well. We'll end up wanting a fair number of these, I think. At least three, though we don't need that many right now. Just one would be enough, and I can start producing some bricks. I'm just kind of placing these down so I can kind of plan out the town. And I'll unpause these constructions later when I'm actually ready for them. There are a couple of other things that I have built out. We do have our herbalist hut, and what this is doing is taking the herbs and it's converting it into a medicinal powder, which we can use to try and heal people up, so our health has actually jumped up to about 88%. I'll say that's pretty darn decent. I'm also going to place down a bedding shop. We had talked about that before. We've got a couple of these knitting workshops, which are taking my excess flax and turning it into ropes. Actually, I probably should start farming some extra flax because I don't think I'm making any right now. Whoops, we should do that. And I do have a dock. So it's going to be a little while before the next ship comes by, but when one does, we can offload something, hopefully get a lot of silver coins and use that to buy something. Or we could even consider ordering something, right? For example, let's say that I wanted a particular seed. Do we want to get, let's say, um, sugar beets, or perhaps some peaches, or something along those lines? We could do that. It would cost me, wow, 72,000 silver in order to order that, but a special order now means we have access to a whole load of seeds and animals that were otherwise locked, or we could buy a lot of other goods, which is pretty darn awesome. So you could, if you want to, continue building your town out to becoming self-sufficient, or... Now might be a time to consider going into something like trade and making various trade goods, which are going to make you filthy rich. Let's start making that refined fuel. Um, I'm actually kind of okay with using logs at least temporarily instead of coal. Not producing an absolute ton of coal, just enough to kind of keep me afloat right now, but we are producing way more logs than I need right now. Thanks to these foresters, they are doing a fantastic job. So we'll go ahead and start making some fuel. And we'll use that over the kiln factory to take some clay and turn it into something like bricks. Or we could make some glass out of sand in a very similar way. I'm also going to set up a soap workshop because once we have some bricks up and running, we can build this. And I'll be able to take, let's say, the beeswax I'm producing at this apiary and start creating soap. And with soap and with bedding we're finally going to be able to get that bathhouse up and running. And I want to do that before we end this video. To get bedding, you need linen and either feathers or wool or cotton cloth or something like that. Don't really care what we use. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, what is this? Some new mushrooms. Does not appear poisonous. You know, um, we're not taking risks with mushrooms, but thank you very much. By the way, I do have some geese that are going to be uh, growing down over here. Kind of hard to see them in the tall grass. But since we found some, if we can get enough geese together, this will be a renewable source of feathers. And I need those feathers for bedding and a bunch of other things. I know it's not as obvious to you because of all the jump cuts, but I'll tell you right now, the tech points are coming in a lot faster all of a sudden, which is great. I would like to consider getting something like a carving workshop, but that's not going to work for me because we don't have any building kits or steel tools. So some of these things, as awesome as they will be, is just not going to be enough. Um, I haven't really messed with caravans at all. That's another thing that changed since the last time I played the game, and I haven't messed with those. I really should. But for now, let's start by getting things like the exploitation tech. Oh, we did get proficient in construction, by the way. Well, that's very nice. And let's get a tech point in probably in the lighting. This is another thing I know I'm going to need. Take some fat and turn that into lamp oil. Does mean we're going to need things like glass bottles and stuff, though, to make lanterns. So this is where the product chains start to get a little bit more complicated. You need a bunch of kiln factories, bricks, glass, glass bottles. You need plenty of fuel, right? There's a lot of things to start producing. We're reaching the stage of the game where my population is starting to grow almost exponentially. So our needs and demands are growing really rapidly. And we're getting access to a lot more production all of a sudden. The extra science points are going to let me unlock a lot of that stuff. We have to continue being very careful and methodical about growing our population at a good rate to meet everyone's needs and still make use of all that good stuff.
In the meantime, though, I think this might be a very good place for us to end this video. Made a lot of progress today. Even though I said I want the bathhouse, it's just going to take a little while, but we'll take care of that next time. So thank you all very much for watching, and once again, thank you to the developers for sponsoring this video. If you guys like what you saw, you'd like to learn more about the game itself, you can find a link in the description down below. Otherwise, I would ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notify bell, and I will see you guys next time in Relliton.